Here, let me tell you about the plane crash. You should all be holding a piece. You all want to hold it? You got it? This will make you connect with the story. Yeah, this is our 3 o'clock. All right, so let me tell you this story just without the laptop. Doug and I, we grew up in Langlestown our whole life. Okay, I had never heard about the 1951 military plane crash on Blue Mountain until that guy right out there, Marlon Pottinger, came to one of our meetings with a box of plane parts two years ago and started telling us about this plane crash. And we're like looking at each other like, really? And you know, I don't think he can hear me. Part of me, you know, I'm like, is Marlon telling the truth or not? <laughs> you know, like, did this really happen? But he, when you talk to him about it, he's very graphic in his mind what he saw. So that, that sent me off to the Dauphin County Library one day, and I spent two hours thumbing through microfish. Cause that, and Marlon didn't even know what year it was. So I, I started in 1950 and with the microfish machine and just started ripping through the newspaper, thinking it had to be a headline. I had to see it on it. So, so I'm thumbing, going through the microfish, and finally I, I get to April of 1951 and I find this newspaper article that says three Ohio guardsmen die in plane crash near city. So once I had it, now I knew old Marlin was telling me the truth and I knew this actually happened. So that, so then that sent me out on a mission like, well we're, and I have another guy coming, there was two guys are going to be here at three that were eyewitnesses to the crash scene. They were young boys and ran up there the next day. So they're going to be here to tell you what they saw. But I'm trying to work with these guys, like, tell me where this plane crashed. And they're telling me, well, it's, it was somewhere up around, if you're familiar with Linglestown, the Mountain View Acres neighborhood on the side of the mountain, near where Camp Sertoma used to be, off Parkway East. And they're proceeding to tell me that that this crash is somewhere up there on the mountain. So I'm trying to nail them down. You gotta give me a little better bearings. And they're referring to logging trails and things that aren't there anymore. And so they finally, they said, well, you go straight up there. You know, it was somewhere up there, halfway up the mountain. So my brother and my son, we took a really good metal detector earlier this year in the winter time so you could see and we spent a couple hours traipsing around the mountain up there with this metal detector and we're actually ready to give up. We, we had made a big loop and came, we're coming back to the car because we thought it's a wild goose chase, you know. And all of a sudden we started getting aluminum hits with the metal detector. And literally the first one, I have it in a bag here, we just brushed the leaves away with our foot and there was a piece of metal. So now I have an idea of where this is on the mountain. And now, in fact, all these pieces I, are pieces I found this year yet. And the story is it was a Ohio National Guard training flight from Columbus flying to Newcastle, Delaware. It was a very foggy, rainy day. Somehow they got disoriented in the weather had no idea if they were trying to, back then Olmsted was an Air Force base, you know, Inter Harrisburg International. So they never made radio contact with Olmsted. They were flying, and you, from Columbus to Delaware, you can picture that in your mind. This plane was flying like due north. It flew right over Linglestown. We've had people at our meetings that's, you know, their family saw this thing fly right over Linglestown headed north towards the mountain. Some speculation that they realized they were in trouble and started trying to gain altitude and, and started trying to turn left. And actually it makes sense when you look at that picture, and it's the only picture I have, you can tell that you're looking east by the, the, the topography of the ground. You can tell the mountain you know, is like that. You're standing in the mountains like that. Well, you can see to the east of you, the trees are all cut off. So this thing didn't come into the mountain straight. He was actually 
turning westward. And uh, it, it's amazing because the news reports said people saw it flying at about 500 feet. What's amazing is where I found these parts is about 900, 1,000 feet above sea level. Linglestown's about 400 feet above sea level. So it's amazingly accurate, the 500 foot thing in the air. And uh, they were disoriented, didn't know where they were, and literally flew into the side of the mountain. Uh, the two guys that I'll have here at three o'clock went up there the next day as young boys would do and gathered some pieces and parts and I'll let them tell the story at three but the police showed up in town the next day confiscating what anybody had found but one box that's out there got hit in a barn in Linglestown for about 50 years because I guess whoever had it didn't want anyone to know they had it but uh, supposedly it uh, you can imagine flying a plane made of aluminum into the side of a mountain full of trees, it just shredded. I mean, the crew members were dismembered. These guys that were there can tell you some ugly scenes they saw. So, which is one of the reasons I'm a little, don't want to give away the exact, because it's kind of like a cemetery. You know, it's, but it's amazing that there's still pieces. Well, I guess it's not amazing. If you think about a plane shredding, going through the trees. I mean, yeah, the debris field, you know. And the other thing, Marlon out here had told me that they came in with big equipment, followed logging roads up there. They hauled out the engines and the tailpiece, the big pieces, and they dug a hole in the side of the mountain and buried the rest of it. And once I knew where I was in a debris field, then some things started to click there's a flat spot on the side of the mountain. And, and there's a bench, we have benches on our mountains here, but this is an unusual flat spot on the side of the mountain. There's a field, probably the size of this parking lot out here, of nothing but rock. I mean, total rock. Trees aren't even growing in it. It's nothing, but you're walking on rock. And right beside it is, a flat, is this flat spot that holds water. So I got to thinking, well, is this where they buried the debris? So we took the meter around it and got hits all the way around it and up the mountain from there. So I, I know where the debris field is, but again, this was a lost piece of lost history that those of us that lived here our whole life had never heard of until Marlon showed up one day telling his story that I half believed. And now I believe him, it's absolutely true. Um, and like I said, it's, it's another spot you got to see in the winter time because I, I, I wouldn't want to go up there now for fear of this. It looks like Snake Haven is what it looks like to me. And it gets all overgrown and you can't really see. But once you realize what you're in, a debris field, you see strange piles of dirt as if a bulldozer just dumped, you know, like why, why is this big mound of dirt here on the side of the mountain? And then you start finding little pieces in it. And uh, so yeah, that's the, that's the plane crash story of 1951. You should take it.